Hey everyone, it is so great to see you today. Now, it's been super fun learning about what Jesus did when he was alive on earth in our lessons lately. And I'm so thankful that God gave us the Bible so we can read about all these things. And today's lesson takes place in Matthew chapter five through seven. Three chapters, that's a lot of uh, verses in our Bible. And it takes place in a place called Galilee. And Jesus is going to, you guessed it, be teaching again. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. Now, how many of you, raise your hand if you've ever seen a mountain? Raise your hand. Oh, lots of you have seen a mountain. How many of you have actually ever been on a mountain? Raise your hand. Miss Melissa has been on a mountain. And when you're on a mountain, is it like short and small? No, it's big and tall, way taller than you, isn't it? And when you're on a mountain, you can look out and you see far away. You can see for miles and miles. And that's where Jesus was. He was on the top of a mountain in Galilee and he started to teach. Now, don't you think Jesus went on the top of the mountain on purpose? He did that on purpose because I think because what he had to say was so important and he wanted lots of people to be able to hear it. So when Jesus went on the top of the mountain, what do you think happened? Maybe some of you guessed it, that's right. A big crowd of people formed and there were people sitting all down the mountain ready to hear what Jesus had to say. Let's watch our video and maybe you can get a picture of what that was like. Great crowds of people followed Jesus wherever he went. One day, Jesus went up on a mountain. He sat down and began to teach about the kingdom of God. First, Jesus taught about the blessings that come to those who follow him. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the humble, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Then Jesus taught how believers should live. Jesus said that believers are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others so that they may see the good things you do and choose to praise God. Then Jesus taught about God's law. Jesus did not come to get rid of the law, but to obey it perfectly. He said that to enter heaven, a person can't just look righteous on the outside like the righteous leaders. A person must be righteous on the inside too, obeying God for the right reasons. Jesus said, love your enemies and pray for them. When you give to people who are poor, give in secret. And when you pray, don't pray just so that people will hear you. Jesus taught the people how to pray. He also said, forgive others. If you forgive those who sin against you, God will forgive you too. But if you don't forgive them, God will not forgive you. Jesus said, do not collect treasures on earth. They can be destroyed or, or stolen. Collect treasures in heaven instead. For where your treasure is, that is where your heart will be also. He taught that God provides for his people. Jesus taught the people many things. When he finished teaching, the crowds were amazed because he taught them like one who had authority. Jesus taught people what it means to follow him. He taught how people should live, 
how they should treat one another, and how to love God. People who trust in Jesus live to honor God and show what His kingdom is like. Jesus taught about so much that day on the mountain. Too much for me to talk about in our lesson today, but I am going to talk about three of the things that Jesus talked about. The first one is salt and light. Do you remember hearing that in our video? Salt and light is talked about in Matthew 5, verses 13 through 16. I'm going to read that to you. It says, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Glory to God. That's what it's talking about. So I brought a salt shaker. Here's my salt shaker. Now what happens when you dump your salt shaker over and you shake salt on your food? It gets all over your food, doesn't it? And it tastes good. And what happens when you turn on a light? A light shines bright all across the room so you can see. So what Jesus is saying here is he wants us to be salt and light for him. He wants us to take our salt, maybe the things we say, what we do, how we treat others, and he wants us to salt what God says about that all up over the people that we come into contact with. He wants us to turn our light on, our Jesus light, and he wants that to be seen to all the people that you come in contact with. So when you're playing with your friends or your brother and sister or your neighbors, your classmates, whoever it is that you come into contact with, when maybe things don't go your way, or maybe you want to say something that's unkind, or someone else does something unkind, I want you to think about, what am I going to do? Am I going to turn on my Jesus light? Am I going to treat them like Jesus would want me to treat them? That's what I want you to remember about salt and light. Number two is forgiveness. Jesus talks about forgiveness in chapter 6. I'm going to read that to you. It's in verses 12 through 15. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Now we all like to be forgiven, don't we? Do you know what forgiven means? Forgiven is like when someone does something wrong against you. You're willing to forgive them. You're willing to overlook it. You're willing even to forget about it. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. Just like God has forgiven us of our wrongs and our sins, he wants us to forgive others of their wrongs and their sin that they do against us. Imagine if someone does something wrong against you and you aren't willing to forgive them. God forgave you of so much. That's why he's saying we should be able to forgive others. So the second thing I want you to remember is put on a heart of forgiveness. When someone does something wrong against you, think about, I need to get my heart of forgiveness out. I need to turn on my Jesus light and let him shine and get my heart of forgiveness out. The third thing I want you to remember from the Sermon on the Mount is treasure. Now, who has something they treasure? 
I bet you have a lot of things you treasure. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you 15 seconds. Be thinking about something you treasure. 15 seconds to go and get something you treasure. Maybe it's a special stuffed animal. Or maybe it's a favorite blanket. Maybe it's something that someone gave you and it's something you treasure. You never want to lose it. Are you ready? On your mark? Don't forget you're going to get a treasure. On your mark, get set, go! I hope you're all back with your treasures. I wish I could see them all. When this lesson is over, send me a picture of your treasure so I can see it. Now here's something I treasure. Can you see my ring? I treasure this ring because my husband, lots of you know him, Mr. Jeff, he gave me this ring a long time ago. And when he gave it to me, he told me that every time I look at it, I can remember how much he loves me. So I never want to lose this ring. Sometimes if I'm having a bad day or just feeling like nobody likes me maybe or I just need reassurance that I have this treasure, I might just like kind of feel it on my finger. Just like maybe you go and get your treasure when you're having a bad day. But Jesus says in Matthew 6 verse 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In other words, he's saying, what you treasure is, or what you treasure, you hold dear to your heart. You hold on to it tight. It means more to you than anything. So Jesus is saying, what's your treasure? Now listen, everyone. I treasure this ring, but I treasure Jesus more. I treasure my relationship, my love for Jesus more than this ring. And that's what he's saying. He wants your heart. He wants your life. And he wants you to treasure him above everything, even the treasure that you're holding in your lap. So do we treasure Jesus more? Do we hold tight to him and all that he means to us? Do we put him first in everything that we do, in our thoughts, in our actions? I hope so. I hope you treasure Jesus more than anything. So remember this, turn on your Jesus light, have a heart of forgiveness, and treasure Jesus more than anything. I want us to pray together right now and ask God to help us to do just that. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for your word, for the Bible, where we can read about you. We can read about your love for us. We can read about how we should live our lives. Father, I pray for all the boys and girls that are watching. I pray for myself that I will be salt and light to those around me, that I will show you, that I will show the love that you have for me and others to everyone around me by the things that I do and the things that I say, that I will honor you in all that I do. I pray too that we will all have a heart of forgiveness, that we will be willing to forgive others of their wrongs, even the ones done against us, because you have forgiven us so much. And I also pray, Father, that you will help us to treasure you more than anything. Help us to remember that when we wake up in the morning, when we lay down at night, to tell you how much we treasure you, how much we love you. Father, we do love you so much, and we're so grateful for how much you love us. And we pray these things in your son's name. Amen.
I hope you're all having fun doing VBS. If you have not gotten a box yet and you still want to, it's not too late. Still come by the church and get a box or send me an email and I'll try to help you figure it out. I miss you all very much and I love you and I can't wait till I can see you again. Bye everybody.